Um, in 2021, the ICF member survey data shows us that coaches tend to be older in more established regions like North America, Western Europe and Oceania and younger in emerging regions that are not as established, such as Asia, Latin America, the Caribbean, Eastern Europe and Middle East and Africa. And there tends to be more millennial coaches in the emerging regions and more boomers in the established regions. In this forthcoming uh, panel discussion, we're going to hear from chapter leaders around the world as they talk about their strategies in use to engage members of the younger generations. And the questions that I'll be putting to the panelists are included in the chat below. I want to welcome our chapter leaders for this very important panel discussion. We have Pedro Santiago Rivero from Puerto Rico. Welcome. Inese Dorena from Latvia. Very welcome. Shweta Handa Gupta from India. Very welcome. And Raya Albawani from Oman. Lovely to see you, Raya, again. Um, I'd invite the panelists now to introduce themselves briefly in terms of their chapter and their role as a chapter leader. Maybe if I go to Pedro first, please. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Uh, as Linda said, my name is Pedro Santiago. I'm from ICF Puerto Rico here in the Caribbean. I was uh, the continuing education director uh, for the previous uh, board and the, the director of communications uh, for this board. So I, I'll be, I've been involved with the chapter in leadership roles for about three years. Thank you, Pedro, and thank you for your service. Inese. Hello, everybody. Uh, I come from Latvia. Latvia is placed near Baltic Sea and we are quite small country as well, small chapter, but nevertheless, uh, a very open, cha uh, open chapter. And uh, I'm president of ICF Latvia board uh, and work second year. But in ICF Latvia chapter, I am already four, four, four years. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Shweta, please. Hi, um, I'm Shweta. I have not been a chapter leader, though I am serving currently as a director at large in the ICF Global Enterprise Board. I've been associated with uh, multiple chapters in my country, India, currently associated with the ICF Delhi chapter. But I am a millennial coach or a Gen Y coach. I think that's why I'm here. And uh, yep, that's it about me. I, I really do hope we get a lot of exciting ideas on how to do more with Gen Y and Z. Oh yes, and as I was just reminded in the chat box, I am also part of the inaugural group of Young Leader Award winners from ICF. So thank you. Great, Shweta. Wonderful to have your young energy with us. And Raya. Hi, I'm Raya Barwani. I'm from ICF Oman chapter. Um, I got roped in to do marketing and PR, uh, and it was supposed to be a seven-month stint, and now I'm the vice president of ICF Oman chapter. If you ask me how I got roped in and how I'm going to, you know, how I'm still in this role, I'll tell you I don't know. I really don't know. You know, ICF is very good at getting you to volunteer for things and keeping you going. <laughs> It's a bit like the Hotel California, Raya, you can never get out. <laughs> okay, I have my first question ready here, and I'm going to come to Inesa first to, to answer. And it is, what are the strategies, um, how are your strategies different for engaging members of younger generations? That will be the Gen Y and the Gen Zs. Uh, thank you very much for this question, uh, which made it possible to evaluate uh, the members of Latvia chapter through the prism of generations. Uh, and our strategy has changed towards more active and appropriate communication. Using the skills learned in coaching, like uh, active listening, feedback and evaluation actually work very well. 
Also, the focus of ICF Latvia is openness and opportunity to grow. And uh, our members, especially in the younger year, are very proactive and we support them in creating new projects and involve them as much as possible, uh, possible in the ICF activities. So giving such opportunities also activates long-term members because we actively communicate what is happening in our chapter in ICF and uh, promote the visibility of active members and give the maximum opportunity to tell about their own achievements. Uh, the best model is when there is succession of co and coaches of all generations are represented. Thank you. Love that. Thank you. Over to you, Pedro. Uh, thank you. I'm a Generation X, so everybody knows, uh, not Y or C, uh, even though I'm young at heart. Well, our chapter has had a lot of initiatives to uh, increase our engagement uh, and increase the number of members. Uh, that we have from Generation Y and Generation Z. Uh, for example, uh, we've had uh, an initiative of bring a millennial to the next event. Instead of charging a fee for, uh, for appearance or for attendance to an event, you will have to bring uh, a millennial. Uh, we also have uh, asked, uh, I was the communications director uh, we have to refocus our communication strategy. You have to go where the millennials or the generation Y, generation, generation C are. So uh, at least here in Puerto Rico, Instagram is the, the, the most used uh, social media for generation Y and generation C. So we have to open a, an Instagram page because, because we didn't have one and we have to put content there, visual content, as Sarah was saying in the previous uh, speak, speaking, uh, their generation Y, the generation C are very visual. So you have to speak their language and you have to go to where they are. So we have developed these different kinds of communication via social media and, and especially via Instagram. Uh, we haven't entered TikTok yet, uh, but we know that, that a lot of Generation Y and Generation Z are there. So that's part of our, our projects. And we also have uh, an engagement. When we have a new member come to the chapter, our membership director calls them. And, and we believe that it's very important to have a direct communication, uh, a verbal communication, not only to send them an email or a WhatsApp message. Uh, our membership director calls them and explains to them what ICF Puerto Rico is, uh, what our, our, com our committees are, and, 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 and gives them a warm welcome. And, and that has done, uh, that has had a, a, a very beautiful effect that our, our members tend to renovate the membership and we're in a very high percentage of, of renovations of, of membership. And just because our membership director calls directly uh, the new members. So there are several uh, strategies that, that we have used. We've also, I have my list here of, of everything that, that we, have, we, have, we have done. Uh, we have also a strong relationship with the coaching schools and that's paramount because our members will come from the coaching schools. Uh, when the pandemic began in 2020, we didn't know what to do uh, for our uh, international coaching week. So we, we spoke with the schools and we gave them the responsibility to organize the international coaching week. That open the doors uh, of communication with the schools. And now they invite us uh, to have a, a conference about ICF, ICF uh, the, the organization and ICF Puerto Rico as a chapter. And they also invite us to their graduations and that has increased uh, 
uh, enormously the amount of members and especially younger generation, uh, generation Y and generation C members. So I recommend to have a strong, strong relationship with the coaching schools. I tend to talk a lot, uh, Linda, I, I, you can interrupt me and say, Pedro, let's give the chance to another person. So I'm going to- You've given us some great ideas, Pedro. And I'll cycle back to you if the other two panelists don't mention them, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, some great ideas. Raya, what would you add, uh, Raya from Oman? Well, um, what we've done to engage uh, members, well, in Oman, life is uh, Gen Y, Gen Z. It's as simple as that. That's who we have. It's, it's a very young population, so we have no choice but to, uh, you know, anyway, you uh, forgive the uh, saying is anywhere you send a Gen Y or a Gen Z. So I've got no choice but to engage with them. Uh, that's number one. Uh, I'm considered a Gen Y elder. So <clears throat> um, that's that's how it is. Um, the good thing is we also, when we're doing experience coaching, we go for job seekers. So uh, during ICW or whenever we're doing pro bono coaching, we go for job seekers or uh, new um, uh, entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs. So they experience coaching. And then we have partnerships with uh, coaching schools as well, other than social media platforms. And we have a lot of videos. Thank God for the pandemic, excuse me, but all our events are virtual. So we have a lot of recordings that we share uh, on our on our. Uh, Thanks, Raya. There's a little connectivity issue there, but we got most of what you were saying. And maybe uh, last thoughts on this topic, Shweta, before we go to the next question. Okay, how the strategies are different, I think we must start with changing our mindset about coaching. You know, when I walk into an ICF chapter, I think we need to shift the vibe. Some of the terms that, and you know, also generations are changing at a much faster pace. I mean, by the time you've adapted to Gen Z, that's become irrelevant in Gen Alpha as you So we need to be moving faster. And, you know, think about the words. I think some of the words that come into my mind, which are more, uh, which will attract, is transparency, is impact, is flexibility. We need to start talking about the parts of coaching that are more exciting to the younger generation. For example, uh, you know, the fact that you can meet, interact with, and coach a lot of different uh, people. You know, the diversity that you get exposure to when you're coaching and, you know, where as a coach, you get to interact with and enter the lives of very diverse people. That's something that might excite them. The potential for constant personal growth. I've seen a great interest in upskilling in the coming generations. They're always looking for forums to upskill and a space where they can build their own style. So these are the parts of coaching, the flexibility, the accelerated learning curve when you're a coach. So, you know, for, for us to have more conversations about the parts of coaching that would be exciting to them, I think that is very important to shift the vibe. And I love what Ines has said about giving a voice and, you know, highlighting the coaches, even the younger ones in your chapters who are doing well. We, we need to watch our language. I mean, if we're repeating the same lines that we were saying, though, you know, 16 years ago, for example, when I became a coach, that's why some, are we hearing from the coaches who were more successful at a younger age? Or are we saying the same old things about white hair? So I think that's something we definitely should keep in mind. And yeah, one more thing is show them the, the clear growth path, the potential for success. And I know a lot of highly successful young coaches, I just wish they were more visible. Great points, Shweta. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let me move to the next question now, which is around what kind of partnerships do you think can help attract and appeal to those younger coaches that you've mentioned? And Pedro, I'm going to come to you first this time. Thank you, Linda. Uh, we have a very active social uh, projects committee uh, in our chapter. And right now we're, we're uh, negotiating, you know, uh, a, a partnership 
with uh, the Head Start program here in Puerto Rico. Uh, Head Start is for uh, younger children, uh, two, three, four years old. And uh, we want to give coaching not only to the, the, the people who work at the Head Start, but to begin with the students at that early age, three, four, five years old, you know, in, in simple terms, tell them what is coaching, begin uh, a project of, of uh, emotional intelligence uh, uh, and develop, you know, uh, from early age. We also are thinking on having these partnerships with universities and with uh, secondary schools. Uh, so that we are engaging with future coaches or future person, persons who might need coaching at a very early age. So we recommend, uh, that's what our chapter is going uh, to do this, this next two years, uh, those kind of, of partnerships uh, to engage, uh, you know, and to go directly to generation Y, Z and the next whatever name uh, generation it will be. Great, Pedro. I just love that idea of almost preschoolers starting really right uh, from an early age. Um, Raya was to be next, but it seems like she's dropped. Um, let me go to Shweta. Are you? Okay, sorry, out of my view. I'll come to you, Raya. Okay, so I think uh, partnerships, I think Pedro's already said, uh, some, like I said, our chapters are a great place to start. I know, for example, some other organization, Toastmasters, they do it well. So maybe we can learn from them. And also, you know, especially in some of the places where I work, we have online communities and forums, which are very goal specific. So maybe there's one about impact. And this is created by youngsters who are very good at community building. So for us to show up there and to learn from their community building skills, I think, and I'm talking about my generation after, like I said, I may be an 80s child, but I'm already relevant to the kids. I mean, I'm already an old woman to them, but the quality of community building that I see from the younger generations is amazing. And we could show up in the forums where they talk about the topics that are of interest to them and uh, you know, platforms. So we have specific platforms that are dedicated to a certain kind of leadership. And colleges, yes, educational institutes are a very useful place to start because they have forums in there. So I'd say that's a partnership that uh, I would, uh, and also, you know, like I said, reinvent our chapters to be the places that are having the events that attract, I mean, obviously love the bring the millennial idea, but to combine with that, to talk about a topic that will really bring them in. I mean, most of the, very young people I coach tell me they wish they knew about it earlier. So how do we get the information to them earlier is a question that always comes to my mind. How, how do they learn sooner about the power that coaching can bring to their lives? And most of them get inspired to become coaches after they've experienced coaching. So that's, that's another learning about, you know, how we should engage with where they are is maybe showcase people who've had great results with coaching, allow them to experiment with it and then want to make a difference. I love that we just got to hang out where the, where the younger folks are and, and, and talk about topics that they are interested in. Okay, Raya, back to you. Okay, well, for us, uh... One of the big greatest uh, partnerships that we have is uh, the government itself is uh, developing young leaders in Oman. So coaching is part of the leadership development uh, program that they're in. Uh, another great source, amazingly enough, is the Gen Xs. They have teenagers or college students who are lost and they also, if one, once they experience coaching, they also refer their kids and that's where they come in. So, uh, and they, they, they start getting an interest in, in coaching as well. So those are the, the partnerships that we are actively engaged in, in ICF online chapter. Excellent. Thank you. 
And Ines, a last word on this question, please. Uh, yes, in our chapter, young um, coaches are interested in a professional working group to look at specific issues. And uh, we are currently implementing this with monthly webinars. Uh, and actually, it would be very nice to be able to organize webinars at transnational level with networking elements. Uh, and the novelty in our chapter is a coaching incubator. Uh, where young coaches can develop their competencies uh, because young coaches are very interested in rapid professional growth and uh, definitely uh, we are interested in transnational pro pro projects and uh, probably, uh, probably we will make one for example we have an idea of Baltic uh, camp in summer um, yes, and last year we started also interchapter project coaching one to one, uh, which was um, particular interest of the new generations of coaches. So, thank you. Thank you, Anesa. I love that point you're making about rapid professional growth being needed by the younger coaches. Yeah. Absolutely. So we can move now maybe to the last question and I'll come to Raya first. This, and I guess this is kind of maybe looking towards the future, but how can we as chapter leaders become more proactive in becoming part of the younger and the potential younger coaches journey? Well, we are lucky in our mind. We're a very small chapter with very little, small number of members. So we actually have the energy and the time to actually talk to everybody um, at least once a year. Um, so as leaders, that's what we do. Uh, my greatest inspiration personally comes from small churches in the States. That's how I work to engage uh, more people and get younger people involved. And one of the greatest learnings that I got from there, involve them in small volunteer work. So I have a start date and an end date. So this is the project, come in, have a taster, and then let's see how we can grow uh, with you a little bit more. That, that's kind of how we, we, we work. It's, it's, it's a continuous evolution. Great, yeah, I like that idea of taster. Brilliant. Okay, next please, Shweta, on this idea of how, how to be more proactive. Thank you. Um, allow them to tell you what they want instead of deciding what they should want or how it should be because the younger, I mean, we don't like to be told. <laughs> Right. So that's one thing is invite them to tell you what they want and impatience. Yes, impatient success. And also, you know, questioning, revisiting our beliefs about the pace that is possible in this area. Right. Are we ready to accept that some of our best coaches may be much younger than we are or we when we were? Right. The age of which I got my MCC, I mean, it's just timelines getting shorter. And can we treat the people who do it at a younger age with the same respect? We had some questions popping up in the chat box about how do we make it as a first career option? And that's a trend I've definitely seen in my country where a lot of the coaches that you meet are people who chose coaching as a career post-retirement or as their second innings and towards the end of the career. But when I walk into the room and that's all who I see, that turns me off sometimes, I'm be very honest. So we have to make space for people who are choosing it sooner, who've been successful sooner. And for that, we need to you know, stop saying some of the things that were true in the earlier age. I mean, one of the most common things we say is about white hair. And we're talking to a generation that believes in diversity and quality of experience. Not, you know, and not expect them to just respect, say respect me because I had a big fat designation at some point. I'm not gonna get that from the next generation. I have to earn their respect. I have to be comfortable with the irreverence that they bring to the table. I have to allow them to be experimentative and have discussions with them about what are all the possibilities of this and show them how powerful it can be as a first career. 
Yeah, I love that around challenging our assumptions and, and, and that what can seem like irreverence, but maybe we need to find another word for that enthusiasm, maybe. Uh, thanks, Shweta. May I just add one more line of before course. we pass on? To bring our coach self into that interaction and offer them unconditional positive regard for who they are, where they are, however crazy that might seem to us. Yeah. And channel our curiosity. Fantastic. Inese, what would you suggest? Uh, I fully agree with Shweta and, uh, and I think the most uh, common is the respect. Uh, but if you look uh, or focus on our members uh, from chapter, it's by activating members, talk more actively about coaching, lead masterclasses and be coaching messengers for themselves. And they're doing it uh, quite well. They go to schools, they go to universities, they make new projects under ICF umbrella, they make teams together and uh, they made new projects uh, and uh, receive money from government uh, and they can spread this voice uh, in our country. So I think we create an environment that makes the journey exciting. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. And a last word to you, Pedro. <laughs> Thank you. I also agreed with what Shweta said. Uh, I, and especially with the irreverence that chapters should embrace uh, to have uh, when dealing with, gener not dealing, but with Generation Y and Generation Z uh, members or trying to attract uh, millennials to, to our chapters. Uh, we can also, uh, and I think uh, we can be part of their journey, you know, through mentoring. We have, uh, of uh, very experienced coaches in our chapters and usually the new coaches uh, well, do not know or are not, uh, are not as, as uh, well, they, do, do, they want to have somebody to talk about their coaching, coaching sessions and, and what are they doing, if they're doing it right or if they're doing it wrong. So I think the chapter can offer mentoring to these new coaches. And also uh, there's a, we have a program in Latin America, the 15 chapters of Latin America. We have uh, United and we have peer coaching. That's another example of what we can do because with peer coaching, uh, if you're a new coach and you don't have a lot of experience with peer coaching, you will gain that experience and you can use that uh, as part of your training you know to become more comfortable uh, being a, a coach and going out there uh, and attracting clients so we use those two strategies uh, mentoring and peer coaching to help our new coaches uh, in their journey to becoming better coaches Thanks, Pedro. I love that, you know, just supporting the professional growth right from the get go. And even reverse mentoring can be wonderful. We can learn so much from, from those newer, younger coaches. And um, this has been a great conversation. And actually, what's lovely is that as you've been talking and sharing, there's been a fabulous uh, parallel conversation building on what you're saying in the chat function. So I think our chapter leaders will be taking away a lot of solid ideas in terms of what they can introduce in 2022 or what they can add to their portfolio uh, to appeal to the younger generation of coaches. So I want to thank each and every one of you for being with us tonight and for being so generous in sharing uh, your thoughts and information and continued success in your chapters. I I'll, I'll invite everyone to do a virtual round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Now, uh, we're going to come into our second breakout of the night. Uh, as we did earlier, we're going to transition now into small breakouts around member engagement strategies. So as before, make sure you have a group leader, 
uh, who've uh, identified early on. And we will have the, uh, you will find the questions to address in the chat function and also in your workbook. So I will uh, see you on the other side and have a great conversation and see you back in 15 minutes. Thank you so much. Now for the fun part, I'm going to invite you to do a report out. I'm going to hand over to Sol. And Sol, if I can tell you, in case you didn't see it, um, Mariam was number one with her hand up. She's very Perfect. excited to share. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. So just uh, a quick reminder for anyone who, who might have uh, joined us after uh, just at this time, to share your thoughts, please share, uh, use your raise hand icon. It is located at the bottom of the screen on the Zoom menu. And so please uh, go ahead, Maria. Yes, so first of all, thank you so much for the panelists. This was a great conversation and very enlightening. So we really enjoyed attending the, um, the event and also the conversation we had in our smaller groups. So I was in the group with Rodrigo and Marcia and they had wonderful ideas that they actually used to engage younger generation. So for Rodrigo, he's from Guatemala, the chapter in Guatemala. The chapter is young, but then in order to involve and uh, introduce coaching, he does, and his chapter also does presentation to colleges about coaching. I mean, so they're not really offering any credits or anything, but they are offering in information, which is a great way to reach younger generations, especially because they're more open to these new ideas. So this is a great way of reaching to the new um, generation. And, um, as, and then about Marcia, who is attending here from Brazil, their ICF global membership is like really expensive, you know, in the currency of the location. So they have started a pilot program where they allow members to become members of, to experience for six months what ICF has to offer. This opens up the opportunity for them to be experiencing without the actual high cost. So I think this is a really nice, um, you know, model for them to um, be um, learning about coaching and to experience what ICF has to offer. And about my chapter, I'm here from ICF Raleigh chapter. And what we do, we have started a program around coaches in higher ed two years ago. And the purpose of that is to identify coaches who practice in higher ed uh, institutions and to give them a label, to give them a name, a coach in higher ed. And, the, and then, um, you know, uh, consequently, the younger generation in colleges, universities will be affected and impacted. We have done two six months programs and we have about 100 people in our um, alumni and we have published a white paper around this and we're reaching to K through 12 as well. So some of our members are working through, you know, a lower educational um, level. So, I mean, yeah, so I'm done. Thank you very much. The, great for sharing. Uh, Sharon? Yes, I had, I was meeting with um, Brenda Eichstein. Um, Brenda is in South Africa and I am from ICF, Maryland. Uh, we talked about a little bit, Brenda had phenomenal ideas from her experiences being in Australia um, with a lot of focus on the work of Martin Seligman. And what they would do in Australia is they have um, teachers, all teachers are trained in positive psychology. And positive psychology can be approached that is used in, in coaching. And Brenda raised a question. Uh, she says, even correctional services staff members are, are trained in positive psychology. Um, that just had my head spinning on what are the various ways that our, um, our Maryland ICF can get involved with, in our, with our outreach committee. But um, we have at Maryland ICF, we have uh, Celebrating Your Success which is a social event for our members. And we do it by Zoom. It's four times a year. We've had a lot of attendance at this, um, at this gathering. We have, sometimes we have the speaker, but this one that we have coming up in March, we will be um, 
having all of the all the leaders on the board of directors um, talking about their role on the board and the different various ways that we can have our members get involved. And we have found out by doing this, a lot of our members then ask, well, what can I do? How can I get involved? We do have a very diverse board this year as far as the generations are concerned. And that is pretty exciting. We, are, we have probably uh, two people in the uh, generation Y who are um, in communications and as well as our treasurer. One of the things that I had thought of as a possibility to get more members involved would be to maybe just ask them to be on one project. And this is a good way of getting some of the younger people uh, involved since they have so much wisdom and technology, but have them get involved on one particular project, give them a timeline. It's gonna be from here to that, you know, beginning and ending, and then they can, then the role is finished. And perhaps that will encourage them to remain um, with the chapter. When I, I love that, you, that last point, Sharon, especially uh, with the younger generations. Yes, and I think that is it for me. Thank you very much. Love your feedback. Um, we have time for one more participation. Uh, Jody. If, if you would please unmute yourself, thank you. Yeah, um, so we just had a really great group and we talked about um, how we reduce the barriers and how that we can open the doors um, for all new members um, uh, to engage better, to have the opportunity um, to develop opportunities um, to enter the door. Um, and so we talked a lot about the generation saying, you know, I don't get credentialing. I don't get what the benefits are. I don't know that I'm even included. Uh, and so uh, we had Washington State, we had Gulf Coast of Florida, and we had Central Florida, all and ICF um, HQ uh, represented, uh, and just talked about ways to reduce those barriers um, and to have uh, the ability to enter um, the playing field of coaching, because uh, we've got to find ways uh, to reduce um, the barriers that exist uh, and increase the opportunities. Um, so when we talked about various options, any of our panel or any of our group want to reply anything else add? Got a great, great group. Thanks all. You're welcome. Back to you, Linda. Thanks, um, Saul. Some great ideas there. And, and as Sharon said, our heads are spinning with so much possibility. And in, it's spinning in a good way. So now we have our five minute comfort break. So uh, let's put on the music. Hopefully it'll be to your liking. And let's see you back in five minutes. Thank you all. <laughs> 